Today we're looking at the same example from the last two videos, but today we're going to do a significance test instead of a confidence interval. So is there convincing evidence that the slope of the least squares regression line that predicts the score um, based on row seat assignment is negative? So that's the question. We're going to do the four-step process. It's going to be very familiar. <laughs> Let's start with state. So our null is going to be that beta equals zero. Remember that beta is the slope from the population, so the true slope. We're starting out with it equaling zero because they asked if there was evidence that the slope was actually negative. So our alternate will be that beta is less than zero. Remember that null and alternate hypotheses have to be about a parameter. We know what b is, lowercase b. It's negative 1.1171. We don't need to do a test about that because we know what it is. We're testing if the population slope is less than zero. Um, I included where beta is the true slope of the population least squares regression line, and let's just test at 0.05, because why not? The plan step, liner, exact same conditions as for the confidence interval, so I'm not going to get into that now. That was in the last video. For the do step, here's the generic standardized test statistic formula from the formula sheet. Like I said in the last video, we're always using t when we're dealing with inference for slope, so we're finding a t score here. Our statistic was the negative 1.1171, parameter is 0, standard error, remember you get that from the mini tab output, so 0.9472 goes right there, and we get a T score of negative 1.18. So that looks something like this. We're looking for area to the left, so we're going to use TCDF, um, negative 1000 to negative 1.18, degree of freedom, remember, is N minus 2 we get um, a p-value of 0.124. Uh, the probability of getting this slope or something smaller, if the null were true, is 0.124. That's larger than 0.05. So we fail to reject the null. We do not have convincing evidence that the true slope is negative. I should have had more context here. I was tired of writing, to be totally honest. I'm recording all of chapter 12 in a day, so. Okay, so most of that should be very familiar. Um, I do want to point out one thing. If you look at the... Um, output, which you have on page one, I think. I just copy-pasted it here so we could see it. Um, this over here should look familiar. We did get a t value of negative 1.18, like right there, and this p value looks almost familiar. If you double our p value, you get 0.248. So the mini tab output actually gives you two extra bonus pieces of information. It gives you the t score, for whatever slope you have, and it gives you the p-value for the two-sided significance test, which is nice. Um, however, if this were a free response question and you were asked to do a significance test, you would still have to show your work. As far as the College Board goes, you have to show your work to get full credit. But this is a nice way to check your answer make sure that you're on the right track. The core idea of a significance test here is still the same, so if if any part of this four-step process is confusing, you might want to go back to the um, significance test chapter, which was chapter nine, just so that you can kind of refresh your memory on how a significance test works. Um, but the details here have only been changed a little bit for slope. <laughs>